Hey there everybody, in this video I'm going to show you start to finish how to make a podcast episode and how to publish it. Alright, let's get into this video right now. What's up everybody, my name is Brandon Brashears. This is the Digital Marketing Madman channel. I am a podcaster, digital marketer, and run a digital marketing agency. And I make videos every single day that help you to grow your business by selling things online with digital marketing. Please consider subscribing because I make daily videos here and I have a lot of free content that's really solid. It'll help you to grow your business online. All right, so let's talk about podcasting. Podcasting is hands down, in my opinion, one of the best ways to grow your business. The reason for that is because you're able to spend so much more time with your potential clients or prospects because you're in their head. They are typically doing other things like working out or washing dishes or you know doing stuff like that and so you're just in their head in their subconscious it's really interesting i was looking at a breakdown of just watch time and listen time by mediums and i do all kinds of marketing i do video creation i do uh, podcasting i do blog posts and hands down podcasting the people that are subscribers on podcasts listen a tremendous amount of time it's actually interesting um the last month i had the average session of a listener was 80 minutes per month for a subscriber, right? That's super impressive because you're able to spend so much time with them. And as a result, when you spend more time with them, they typically know, like, and trust you more. And so you're able to hopefully close more deals and close more business if you have a podcast. That's why I love podcasting so much. So that being said, it is a little bit difficult to get started with podcasting just because there's a lot of technical requirements and things that most people don't have experience with. But good news is it's really, really simple. I'm going to show you how to use Libsyn, which for the hosting, you can also use SoundCloud or Anchor or a bunch of other options. Typically, I just like to suggest either Libsyn, SoundCloud, or Anchor. Those are the, those three cover everything that you're going to need. But we're going to go from start to finish how to come up with your idea, how to record it, how to master and edit it, and then how to go through and um, publish it and distribute it. So let's get into this video. So the first thing that you need to have is an idea. And if you're not sure what to create a podcast about, you should probably go to a tool like Uber Suggest, which is Neil Patel's organic search tool. And you can just see what people are searching for. Another great place to do that is in YouTube and you can just start typing in questions. So if you were trying to think of ideas, like for example, on I want to make a podcast about how to create Facebook ads. What should I title it? What kind of ideas should I come up with? If you type into Google, how do I come up or how do I make, how do I run Facebook ads, right? So you can just think about all the ideas. It'll populate a ton of ideas and give you plenty of ideas to create your podcast. Once you have that, I like to go through and then kind of outline the podcast. If it's not something that I know cold, and I need to do a little bit of research, I will go through and research the podcast topic that I'm going to do and come up with ideas and then get started. Now, one thing that I think is really important for podcasting specifically is having a format that is consistent so that you don't have to think about certain things. So the format for a podcast typically, in my opinion, is the intro, the middle, and the content, and then the end. The intro is where I put calls to action and I drive people to try and go do something. So I typically like to start with the same thing. I say who I am, what's going to be in the podcast, why they should care, why they should listen, and then I do any kind of sponsors or anything like that. And then I get into the content. I always make sure that I tell them I think it's valuable that they listen all the way through and I tell them specifically what's in it for them and why it's going to be helpful. I think that that's really important. People want to know what's in it for them in anything that they do. And if you don't tell them what's in it for them, they're just going to kind of get bored unless you're super entertaining. So there's that. If you're really entertaining, you can always kind of get people to go through. So having that defined and kind of scripted out is good. If you think about like the most popular TV shows and the most popular just shows in general, there's usually recurring themes that happen, right? If you start any kind of theme song from a movie or from a TV show, like the Cheers song, you just hear the beginning notes, you know what's coming, right? Having that kind of repetition over and over again, it helps to build your brand recognition and just gets people expecting your content. So that being said, I think it's important that you have just a formatted intro. So typically again, it's like my intro is like this. Hi, my name is Brandon Brashears. Thanks for watching the veteran or listening to the veteran marketing podcast. In this episode, we are going to talk about, I say X, Y, and Z, and this will help you get 
end result that we're sh shooting for. And then, so like the last episode that I did, I said, hey, this is Brandon. We're going to talk about four new features in Google My Business that will help you to get more clients in your veterinary practice, right? So we know exactly who it's for, what it's about, and why they should listen. Then I go into intros. With calls to action, I typically like to try and drive more engagement um, because this is a podcast or top of funnel type content pieces, meaning that people that, that find your podcast, they're becoming aware of you. What's the next step that you can take them so that they get more into your funnel and get more engaged? I think having a clear understanding of how your podcast fits into your marketing plan is really important. But then I get into the actual recording of it. Now, I use a program that's called Audacity to record it. I'm going to show you really quick inside the computer what that looks like. How it works is really, really simple, and the best part is it's free too. So if you don't have a microphone, like I have a, a Yeti um, right here, I love this because it's a USB microphone. It's really simple to use, and you just plug it in. I also have other microphones as well. Um, I've had a Yeti Snowflake or a Blue Snowflake before. The audio quality wasn't the best, but it was better. But when I started out, I just was using my computer microphone, and like I didn't have anything else to start with, so I just started with that. Don't get caught up in the technology. I'd say if you're just starting out, look for a reasonably priced and reasonably reviewed uh, podcasting microphone that's USB so that you don't have to have a mixer, mess with audio levels, and do all of that stuff. Make it as simple as possible on yourself. And if you don't have anything else, use your iPhone or your, your smartphone. Those have pretty solid microphones in them. And with the Anchor app, you can actually go through and... Um, create a podcast start to finish all on your mobile phone and do the editing and everything. It's really, really cool. If you look below, I'll link to Anchor FM and uh, be sure to check that out as well. So this is Audacity. It is a free program that you can get on SourceForge. I'm going to link this on my video description here, but it's pretty simple. Right here you have your main controls. You can hit the record button, which is this red button, start and stop. You have all of your editing tools right here. We also have the input here. So we're going to be able to choose which microphone. I have my Yeti stereo microphone in there. I'm only going to be doing a, I always do a stereo track. Um, I don't know that there's a better setting or what that's for. And then we have, again, this is where the audio is coming out so that I can hear myself and see. Now, a few quick tips when you're recording. So you're going to hit this and record. Make sure that you're able to stay a consistent distance away from the microphone. You want as you know, you don't want to have a really close section like this and then a faraway section that's quiet. So be as close to uh, getting out to the max as you can here in your recording levels um, without over and blowing out your your microphone. When you go like this, it's just so loud it blows it out and you don't want to have that happen. So make sure that you're consistent in the distance that you are away from your microphone. Now you're able to edit this and cut it and paste it and everything like that. Once you have it edited, you're going to want to do a few things. First, you're going to want to file, um, sorry, hit hit the file button and then hit save. You're going to save the project. Now, saving the project, it saves it in a file format that's specific to Audacity. It's not a, a file format that you're able to upload and use. Once you have it edited, you're going to then export it. You're going to export it as either a WAV file or an MP3. Now, typically, I just hit whatever is, is there, um, and it'll be a WAV file that it's going to export it as. Um, and I'm just going to name it as an example. And then it exports the file. Now, it'll ask for some metadata tags. If you're not going to master your file, you're going to want to fill this out. You're going to put your artist name, track title, track number, year, genre, comments, things like that. Um, it's not necessarily important that you do that here. And the reason for that is because you're going to go to uh, Auphonic and you're going to master the file there. So now that we've recorded the content, what we have to do is master it. And what mastering is, is it lets the audio levels be consistent. So I have a pre-recorded intro song that's got like somebody talking about what the podcast is and who it's about. And then after the intro song, we have me talking. And so we have difference in audio levels. So if somebody was listening, it would blast out their eardrums and then it would go quiet. And I want it to be consistent. So I use a program that's called Auphonic, or it's, yeah, it's called Auphonic. Dot com and it's free for up to two hours of mastering so you're able to really get your audio to sound good and look good now what's cool too is you can go into Auphonic and use it to build what are called wave files so it's like social media posts that have like waves on them so it's an interesting way to share your content on social again you're going to want to create a podcast episode 
inside of Alphonic, you're going to create a new account. And once you've created one, you have up to two hours of mastering for free. So you're going to upload the file. You choose it here and upload it. Let's just choose one for fun. I'm going to use that test. It's on my desktop. I'll just use this one. Why not? Okay. So with this, you can add an intro and outro automatically, which is cool if you want to just have your production batched. I typically add it in production before I upload it, just because I like to have it done before. The other thing that's kind of cool here is that you can add your metadata. You can also choose a cover image. Now, when you're doing an out output here, you can add another output that is like these waveform videos, which is kind of cool. Waveform videos are a picture, a still image with the um, sound waves traveling over it. It just looks cool. It's kind of engaging. And that's a good way to share your, your podcast content on social media and things. Once you do that, you're going to hit start production and go. Typically, I don't do noise and hum reduction just because I can't hear it beforehand. Um, just in general, make sure that you don't have noise going on in the background uh, because you only have a limited amount of uploads and it just takes more time to fix it here. Once you've uploaded it, it will then turn into a product that looks like this. It will show you the levels that it adjusted and edited and make everything consistent all the way throughout. So you're able to see. Now, one thing that I really like to do here is to double check and make sure that I don't have any segments that are missing or anything that looks weird. You know, everything should be consistent. If you have gaps in your audio, you know, starting and stopping and things like that, then you're going to, um, you know, be able to see it here and fix it before you publish it on iTunes, which is definitely important. So once we have that finished and the audio levels are all solid and it's at a place where it sounds good, it looks good, we download that into an MP3 format. Now we want it to be an MP3 format because you're able to convey how long the episodes are in MP3. If you did a WAV file, for example, and you just upload it into iTunes, it's not going to tell you how long the episode is. I think it's important to have the episode length in there because people will want to know, you know how long that they're listening to it or what time they should commit to listening inside of iTunes. So once you have that set up, what you're going to do is then um, submit it to or upload it to your hosting. Now, you, you, a lot of people who get started in podcasting think you're submitting the audio files to iTunes or Google Play, and you're actually not doing that. iTunes and Google Play are just directories, and what they do is they just pull data from your XML feed. An XML feed is just a formatting feed that is pulling and telling these different podcast directories what data they should pull, what data they should play. And so it's not actually being hosted or anything like that inside of iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or all these other podcast networks. It's basically just using that. So you don't want to host this on your own website or on your own server just because the bandwidth requirements are huge in that if you don't have really good hosting, it's going to slow down your site. It's just going to bog things down. The other thing that's really great is that hosting is cheap and reliable. Back when I started, the only option was Libsyn, and Libsyn is awesome, but the, the thing that's, I think, important to think about and to realize is that you can also use SoundCloud for free. And there's been a lot of talk about, hey, is SoundCloud going out of business? I don't think SoundCloud's going to go out of business. If they did, then you could always export. I'm sure they'll have a way to export um, your content out. But the SoundCloud free option is really good too. You're limited on how much you can upload. But if you want to do a paid version, it's only like five bucks a month for uh, a paid version. If you want to do Anchor, Anchor is completely free. They have a, a desktop uploader, a mobile uploader, and you can have as much content on Anchor as you want to for free. They also have tons of other bells and whistles built specifically around their platform that lets you export videos that are um, like captioned videos that have words showing up. A lot of cool features about that. So think about which platform is going to be best for you in the long term. Libsyn is kind of the standard as far as uh, professional standard. So if you want to grow your podcast and make it more like mainstream and have mainstream advertisers and things, I'd say Libsyn is kind of just the, the standard go-to. So Libsyn, it starts as cheap as $5 per month and goes up to $75 per month. And it depends on how much you're going to be uploading on a monthly basis. So for example, that podcast episode that I just showed you here is 39.2 megabytes. And I do one of those like weekly. 
So depending on the frequency, you're going to have you know the ability to do 10 of those episodes, and that's an hour of audio. So it's basically like 10 hours of audio, depending on the file format and things that you're uploading. So if you have this classic editor, you, you know maybe if you have really short episodes, this one will work for you. This is definitely a great step up for only $10 more, but it really just depends on what you're looking to do. So SoundCloud has the free, which you get three hours of upload time. That's a lot. You get basic stats and basic embed controls. Now, if you're just starting out and you're going to see and kind of dip your toe into the water and see if, if podcasting is something that you think you're going to like, this is great. The Pro Unlimited has tons of great features. And then this Pro Monthly is also a great solution too. So again, I mentioned that... Um, the podcast that you're going to create is just going to be hosted by either SoundCloud, Libsyn, or Anchor, and you're going to get an RSS feed. I said it was an XML feed in the video. It's actually an RSS feed. You're going to copy and paste this feed and then submit this feed to iTunes and Google Play. And the place that you do that is in what's called iTunes, Google, uh, iTunes Connect and Google Play. So the last one that I have here is uh, Anchor, and I have a podcast that I created on Anchor. I was actually surprised to see the stats here on this. That's kind of interesting. Uh, so you get data and all kinds of cool things. Now let's go into you upload episodes here. It automatically distributes here, um, which is really, really cool. So anyways, you can, you can use Anchor and it's completely free. Now, the only thing that's kind of a bummer about Anchor is that they put an overlay on your podcast tile. And they also say this podcast created by Anchor, which is just kind of a bummer. But anyways, it's pretty cool. So it just has tons of cool features. Choose which one's going to fit your budget and your game plan. You know, big podcasters do use Anchor. Like Casey Neistat launched his podcast on Anchor, which is kind of cool. So check it out and kind of play with it and see what you, do, what you think. Now we're going to head back to the office and I'm going to share with you just a few things to consider here while you're going. So my podcast is published on my website and my feed comes directly from my website and feeds to both iTunes and Google Play. So I use Libsyn as the host. I then host, the, I embed that file into my website with a Blueberry WordPress plugin. And then once things get posted, it gets distributed to iTunes because the XML feed gets updated and now the podcast is available inside of iTunes. Don't let this confuse you. This is actually very, very simple to do. If you're trying to submit a new podcast, all you have to do is go to iTunes Connect and Google Play and submit them there. If you have Libsyn, it also auto distributes to things like Spotify and other podcast networks that you can use too. So just a really quick review here. It's not too difficult. The first thing that we have to do is come up with the idea then we map out the idea, then we record it. After we record it, we edit it. After it's edited, we master the file to make the audio level sound good. We upload that to the hosting. Once it's uploaded to the hosting, we then publish it either on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you wanna host it and publish it. If you have any questions, please be sure to let me know. It's, it's, it seems kind of daunting to get started, but it's actually not very difficult at all. I hope that you get started. If you are podcasting right now, drop a uh, comment below with the link to your podcast. I would love to hear it and know what your idea is. So thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day, and I'll see you on the next video.